Welcome to the second video of the Ethernet configuration. You must watch part 1 before watching this video. In the previous video, we configured the MII with the memory configuration, and as I mentioned, this video will cover the RMII without memory configuration option. So let's start the Cube IDE. I am using STM32F7508 discovery board, and here is the Ethernet port on it. Give some name to the project, and click finish. Let's see the board schematics. Here is the Ethernet module, and as you can see, it have the RMII connection type. First of all I am selecting the external crystal for the clock. The board have 25 MHz crystal, and I am running it at the maximum 216 MHz frequency. Now let's go to the Ethernet tab, and enable it. This entire thing looks too messy, let me clear the pinouts first. OK, now let's enable the Ethernet RMII. We will configure the parameters later, let's check the pins first. As I mentioned in the first video also, the Cube MX will mostly configure the wrong pins, so make sure the pins are configured exactly as they are in the schematics. Apparently they are correct here, but if any pin is incorrect, all you have to do is click on the correct pin, and choose the function. The other one will disable itself. The pins are fine, so let's go to the parameter setting. Notice that, unlike the first video, here we don't have the option to configure the memory. So let's configure the rest of the options. Make sure the PHY address is zero. This zero should be selected for onboard Ethernet port, just like I have on my discovery board. If you are using any external module, like the one shown in the picture, I think you need to keep it one. I am not very sure about this. I will leave the comment later, if I find anything. Now leave everything to default. This is it for the Ethernet configuration. Now let's configure the LWIP. Again we have DHCP and we will disable it. Now we will manually configure the IP, subnet, and the gateway. This will be the static IP for our board. Leave everything to default, and go to second option. Here we will configure the heap size. Just like the first video, we will keep it 10 kilobytes. Notice here that we don't have the option to configure the address for the heap. But that's okay. Leave the rest of them to default settings. We don't need to configure these. Make sure the checksum is enabled. That's it for the LWIP configuration. This was considerably easier, as compared to the previous video. Now I am enabling the cache. And finally we will configure the MPU. 
But before that, let's build the code once, to check for the sizes. I only have one RAM here, and everything is packed in it. The TXT MA descriptor is 128 bytes in size. Also there is TX buffer, which wasn't present in the previous video. Also keep an eye on their locations in the memory. We have RX buffer, and EMA descriptor also. If we check the Ethernet if.c file, here you will notice that, there are no sections defined for the buffers. If you remember the previous video, this is how they were defined. Well there is a valid reason for that. This is the memory organization for the F75 series MCU. The RAM is made up of DTCM, SRAM1, and SRAM2. If you notice the memory locations of all the descriptors and buffers, they are all defined in the DTCM region. If you have watched my previous videos on memory configurations, you might remember that the TCM memories are non-cacheable. So if we keep the DMA descriptors in the TCM region, we don't need to worry about cache coherency, and that's what is happening here. Technically, if I don't do any memory or MPU configuration, the code will still work alright. This I will show in the end of the video. But this won't be the case for everyone, so I am going to go ahead with memory configuration. I am going to shift the descriptors and buffers to this SRAM1 region. So let's go back to our cube MX, and configure the MPU first. Enable the region. The base address will be the address for the SRAM1. Now the size. Let's see how the memory will be allocated. The allocation starts at 2,010,000. And here we will keep the DMARX descriptor. This will occupy 128 bytes and there we will keep the DMATX descriptor, which will occupy another 128 bytes. Then we have the RX buffer, and the TX buffer. They both are taking 5.95 kilobytes of memory each. Altogether they will take 12.15 kilobytes of memory. So in the MPU configuration, choosing a 16 kilobytes region will do the job. Now just like previous video, we will make this region as non-cacheable. So select the TEX1, permit all access, and set up the shareable non-cacheable region. That's it for the MPU configuration. The other configuration is for QSPI, and you don't need to worry about that right now. Now we need to add the sections in the flash script. Here I have added them. Starting with DMA descriptors, and then the buffers. The memories are spaced as per the size requirement for each section. But the objects will not relocate just yet, because they are not linked to those sections we defined. So we need to link them ourselves.
Everything I am doing now, has been covered in the memory configuration video. So if you don't understand this, watch them first. This will be our section, and we will link it to the DMARX descriptor. Similarly, we need to link others also. Now comment out this part, and build the code. Note here, the locations for the TX descriptor and buffer has been shifted to SRAM1. So we are good to go. Let's write our basic code, just like we did in the previous video. Let's debug it, and check if we have any memory issue. It hit the breakpoint, so everything is working fine. Now we will let it run freely, and ping to this address. So it's working perfectly. One last thing I wanted to show you here. Remember when I said, the buffers and descriptors are placed in the TCM RAM, so they don't need the MPU, or any memory configuration. Let's comment out this part. Now the descriptors are placed in their default location, and we can check it in the memory details. You can see the location here, it's in the DTCM RAM region. Also remember that MPU is not configured for DTCM, we have configured it only for the SRAM 1. So this is basically the default setup, with no modifications for the memory. Let me comment out this part also, just for the satisfaction. Let's debug this. So we hit the breakpoint, means everything is okay. And if we ping the address, we do get the response. So this was the configuration for the Ethernet. I know, for some of you this will be as simple as the default setup and for the rest, it could get very complicated. That's why I have covered every possible scenario. Every complicated thing shown in the video, have already been explained in the previous videos. Watch the Cortex M7 series videos from the beginning, and you will understand everything. The next video on Ethernet will cover the UDP protocol. This is it for today. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, be safe, and have a nice day ahead.